Welcome back to another VR chat tutorial video. I'm Ask Amber and today I'm going to be showing you all the things that I know about adding dynamic bones to your avatars. Now one really important thing to remember is that avatars with dynamic bones are only viewable on PC so if you're looking to make quest models this is probably not a very applicable tutorial for you. I hope you're ready let's get right into it. So the first thing you need to do when you go into Unity is go to your asset store right here and search for Dynamic Bone. This is what it looks like. It's $20. You can use it in every continuing project. And to find it later, you just go into your profile and look at what you've downloaded and you just click import and you can get it right in your project. So I'm going to import this into my project right now. So this is the avatar that we're going to be putting dynamic bones on. The only time that you can actually put dynamic bones on your model is when there is an actual bone that is weight painted in Blender. Most avatars that you get from VRC mods, if they say that they have the bones in there, then they do, but you can't always bet on that. Luckily for us, this model has bones that we can make dynamic, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Before I put any dynamic bones on her, I'm going to put what are called colliders. This is for like if you have dynamic bones and you want to be able to touch them and have them move, you need to put a collider on whatever you want it not to go through. So let's say we have these braids that we're going to put dynamics on and we don't want these braids to go through the front of her. We want them to stay on her back and if she leans forward or moves forward, we want them to go over her shoulder and look realistic. They don't want to just go straight through her. Now I always like to put my colliders on first because it makes it a lot easier when you're adding the dynamic bones to select which colliders apply to which dynamic bones. It just saves you a lot of time going back and forth in the end so I always put my colliders on first. So the first collider I'm going to put on is on her hands so that when she touches things that stuff moves. So for instance if she wants to touch her chest or if she wants to flip her hair out of the way we're going to have her hands be colliders. And I always like to put the collider on the middle finger. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my left shoulder, left arm, and I'm going to work my way down. And I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to click create empty and I'm going to name this finger collider. Now the reason that I don't just put the collider on the actual bone is because you see if I were to move this bone around, then the finger with it and the bone would move together. So I'm going to undo that. But if I do this and put my collider on an empty game object, then when I move it around, nothing is affected on the hand, but it's still parented to this hand, so it'll still stay with this hand when you move it around. So now I'm gonna go into the inspector, click add component, search for dynamic bone, and click on dynamic bone collider. Now, as you can see, when you first put on a collider, it's gigantic, it's really, really big, so we're gonna wanna make that smaller. The way we do that is by changing the numeric value of these items in the script box. So I'm going to change this down to 0 .004, which is a pretty good size circle for hands. So I want this to be a little bit more than just this one circle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a height to it. As I add the height, it makes it wider. And anything in between these two circles is also going to be a collider. So imagine there's like an invisible tube connecting these two. And that's going to be a collider as well. And because I have this as a game object, as not as part of the actual model, I can drag this over so that her whole entire hand is now a collider. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this component and I'm going to close up the left shoulder and I'm going to go down to the right shoulder, right arm, right wrist, middle finger. I'm going to create an empty game object right here and I'm going to name this finger collider and I'm just going to paste that component that I just copied as a new one and then move that finger collider over. And now both of my hands have colliders in them. Now I want more than just my hands because I want to make sure that the braids don't go through the body. So I'm gonna put one on the chest as well. I'm gonna right click, create empty and call this chest collider. I'm going to add a component, a dynamic bone collider. So I'm gonna shrink that down. And as you can see, it got smaller. You can see the outline. Sometimes it's hard to see the dynamic bone colliders. And I want this to go from about the shoulder area 
down to where the bottom of the braids are and if your hair was longer you could take it even further down so I'm going to add a height right here and because once again this chest collider is not actually one of the body bones but it's just an empty game object that we put in there we can actually manipulate this so I can rotate it a little bit move it over keep adjusting it until it's right in the right place and I think that looks great all right, let's work on her shoulders. So I'm gonna add another chest collider. Call this one shoulder collider. And I'm actually just going to paste the hand collider in here cause why not? And as you see, these are going up and down but I can change them to going sideways by changing the direction. So I'm gonna change it to the X direction and now you can see these two are going side to side instead of up and down. I'm gonna make these a little bit bigger and I'm gonna change the height a little bit so that they're a little further apart and drag this up so they're right at shoulders. Don't forget to turn your model around to make sure that the collider is right on the ball of the shoulders. All right, and for this one, I think that's all the colliders we need. If you did have hair that came forward in the face that you were planning on animating, I would recommend adding a head collider as well so that it doesn't go through your face and it just goes around your face. But for now, these braids are not gonna go through your face. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the very top level. Now, some people add dynamic bones on the individual pieces. Like if I wanted to add the bone on just this one, I could click on here, add component, add the dynamic bone and then go through and do it that way. That's a fine way of doing it. For me, I like to keep them all on the top level so that I can edit them all at once and not have to like go through my entire armature every time whenever I want to change them. So I'm going to add a component and I'm going to add my dynamic bone. And this is the window that comes up. And now I'm going to pick the area that I want to start animating. So I'm going to drag the hips into the root section on this panel. Now, if you were to put the hips on there and push play and go, her entire body would just become jello. In fact, I'll show you. Because the hips are the root of everything and all of the other bones are attached to them, it's going to take the hips plus everything that's underneath it and add dynamics to it. In order to only animate the parts of the body that we want to animate and not have everything go berserk, we're going to use what's called exclusions. It asks you the size, which is basically how many. So I don't want to animate one, two, three, four. So I'm going to add four down here. And then I'm just going to drag each one of these down into the exclusions. These bones and all the bones nested underneath will not be part of this dynamic bone. Then I'm going to add my colliders. Now this is why we made the colliders first so that we can drop them in here without having to go back and create the colliders and then click on the dynamic bone later and add them after the fact. Select the amount of colliders you want and because we're just putting the two hand colliders on this one, we're going to select two and we're going to choose both finger colliders. That way the collider in your hand will know to interact with the bone that you're creating right now. Now the colliders that we made in the hand and added to this dynamic bone need something to collide with because otherwise it won't know where to collide. So we're going to add a radius. This white sphere is the radius. So changing the numerical value will change the size of it. And that is what determines what interacts with the yellow sphere that is the collider. And now I'm going to do the rest in play mode so that I can actually see as it goes along. It's really important that whenever you do go into play mode and you make changes in here, that you copy this script and then when you exit play mode, you paste this component back into here because every change that you make in play mode will disappear once you exit play mode. So I'm going to go into my scene right here and I can move my girl around. And you can see her butt jiggles and that seems like a little bit too much. Now just remember that anytime you go into VR chat, your jiggle will be a little more intense than what it shows in Unity. Dumbing it down just a little bit is always a good idea. So let's look at some of the settings in here. Update rate is how fast it comes back to normal. So do you want it to snap back really quick or do you want it to come back really slowly like sway as if it's underwater? For the butt jiggle, I'm going to leave it at 60 but we'll change some of this for the hair so you can see what I'm talking about. I don't actually know the exact definitions for all of the settings in the dynamic bone, but I do know what the result is. So as far as damping goes, if you've ever seen those VR chat avatars with the tails that look like they're having a seizure or a panic attack or they're going all over the place, damping is usually the culprit and you're going to want to turn that up and towards the right. 
I like to think of elasticity as how much it turns into putty when you're using it. So if you have a really low elasticity, then it's going to be very, very fluid. If you have a higher elasticity to the right, it's going to be a little stiffer. Stiffness pretty much speaks for itself. It's just how stiff you want it to be. I don't really mess with this one a whole lot because I usually like to do most of my work in damping and elasticity, which goes for inertia as well. Inertia is just how much or how little it moves based on how fast you're going. So if you're going really fast and you want it to move fast with you, then inertia will be the slider for you. To be honest, I don't really use end offset gravity or force when I do my dynamic bones. I know they can be really helpful in doing special effects and having things weighted down or floaty away, but I'm a really simple designer and I like to keep things as minimalistic as possible, so I just find a lot of success with the other sliders and the update rate. So before I exit play mode, I'm going to copy this component exit play mode, and then I'm going to paste the component values back in that same exact component. Now we're going to do the same exact thing we did for the hips, but we're going to do it for the boobs. Okay. So I'm going to drag my chest into a new dynamic bone, and I'm going to add the exclusions and the colliders that I need. Don't forget to add the chest collider and the shoulder collider that you created to your dynamic bone exclusions, because otherwise they'll move around just like anything else would. I don't need the chest or shoulder colliders on this one, so I'm going to set my collider size to 2 and select both of my finger colliders. Now I will zoom in, and we're going to add the radius, so I'm going to say 0.5 to start. So I'm going to add it a little bit bigger, let's try 0.7. Alright, now I'm going to take it into play mode and do the rest of the adjustments as I can test them. Sometimes when you go into play mode, this menu moves around a little bit so you just make sure that you're always editing the correct one. In this one I'm going to change the update rate down to 50 to make it snap back a little slower. You can also change the power of the distribution of the settings that you're editing with these little squares and these are totally customizable to however you want to have them for each given element. I'm just going to change all the rest of these settings here based on my own personal preference and this is something that you're going to have to play around with as you get more into dynamic bones. Everyone does dynamic bones differently so where you put these sliders is totally up to you. And just mess around with it until you feel like it looks good and it looks natural and then copy your component, exit play mode and paste your component values. All right, so now we have two sets of dynamic bones done and the last thing I'm going to do is the braids. I'm going to add a new component, I'm going to navigate in my armature, and I think I'm going to do each braid individually because sometimes when you just do the head as the root, it kind of turns out funny and bends weird, so I'm just going to do two separate ones. I'm just going to drag this braid in here, and because it doesn't have anything that I want to exclude, I want everything underneath this braid, I'm going to leave the exclusions to zero. I'm going to use all of my colliders, so four. I'm going to change my radius. Now that's really big for this. You don't want it to be that large, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. That's good. Because it's hair, I like to half the amount of update rate. I'm just going to up these out of guessing just a little bit. And then I'm going to enter into play mode and finish off the edits there. Now that I'm in play mode, I can see that the radius of my braids is a little big because it's being pushed back pretty far against this collider. So I'm just going to lower that just a teeny bit. There you go. And now you can see it kind of sunk in a little bit. That looks good to me. And now as you see, when I move her around, the braid moves. I still think my damping, the spazziness of it is a little bit out of whack. So I'm just going to put it like that. On this one, because I see that the braid is so far down, I'm actually going to try something. This is always trial and error, you guys. So as I was saying earlier about putting just braid 1 and 2, I'm actually going to try and see what it looks like to just put the head and use exclusions. So I'm going to put the head in there, and then the exclusions, I'm going to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 exclusions. And all the settings are the same, except for now both braids are on there, and we can test it with both braids to see if using the head as a root actually worked out better for this, which sometimes it does. So that actually looks like that worked out really well. So now I'm going to copy this component, then exit play mode, and I'm going to paste it where the braid component was.
Now your model is all totally ready to upload to VRChat and when she's in there, she's going to have all of her dynamic bones good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or reach out to me on any of my social media. Please feel free also to join my server in Discord so that you can get more avatar updates, freebies, stuff like that. I'll have everything that you need linked in the description below. See you in the next video.